Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. Uh, so today I was going to talk about a uh, shooting that occurred recently here uh, in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Uh, I teach permit to carry in Minnesota, among other things, and I thought this was a uh, interesting case, and, and I don't mean to like intellectualize it because you know someone did die, and and that's tragic, and we'll get to that. But I, I think that there's a multifaceted issues going on with this one in particular that I think are worthy of discussion. So here we go. Uh, number one, Dante Wright was originally pulled over, as far as I can tell from what I can find, for expired tabs. Uh, I don't know if this is a thing in all states. I'm pretty sure it is, but you have tabs. In Minnesota, you have to pay money every year to the government. It's a tax, and you get this little tab that you, that you put on your license plate to prove that you paid your taxes for your car that year. And if you don't do that, you can get pulled over for it and get a ticket, or if your car is just parked somewhere, some meter maid can write you a ticket and stick it in your windshield. Uh, so it's a thing. Tabs are stupid. I mean, they're just, they're just incredibly stupid. And it's even more stupid that you can get pulled over for them. Uh, there's, there's no reason we should be pulling people over to give them a couple hundred dollar ticket because they didn't pay their couple hundred dollar fee to the government this year to own their car. Tabs are just stupid. We should get rid of tabs entirely. Number two, he had a warrant out for illegally possessing a pistol. Now, at first that might sound pretty bad, but I will try to edit it in right here. Apparently what he was doing is he was possessing a pistol in a public place without a permit to carry. In Minnesota, that's a gross misdemeanor. So up to a year in jail, up to $10,000 fine. Okay, that's, that's, that's a gross misdemeanor in the state of Minnesota. In order to get your permit in Minnesota, it's honestly not that bad. Uh, you have to go take a permit to carry class and those are gonna range anywhere from 60 to 120 bucks depending on who you take it, when, where, why, whatever, all that stuff, okay? Uh, then you got to go to your local county sheriff, uh, and at the max fee they can charge is 100 bucks. In all the big counties, like Hennepin County, it's 100 bucks. So at minimum, you know, you're looking at 150, maybe 200 dollars uh, tax from the government in order to exercise your right to carry. Constitutional carry is a thing. Uh, I think we're up to 14, give or take, states now that have it. Every state should have constitutional carry. Uh, the fact that you have to get a permit to carry is an infringement on your Second Amendment rights. So the warrant that was out to arrest this guy was because he didn't have his permit, his little permission slip from the government, in order to exercise his fundamental rights. That's a problem. Number three, apparently also Minnesota has some kind of weird law. I don't even know if I knew this, and I've been in Minnesota for a very long time, uh, that it's illegal to hang something from your rearview mirror. Actually, now that I say that, I think I did know that. But anyway, so like air fresheners, anything like that, you can't hang anything from your rear view mirror. And you can be pulled over, as far as I understand it, if you do that. Again, another stupid law that we don't need to have in order to pull people over for that. So if you're counting so far, this is three, in my opinion, bad laws that help contribute to creating a bad situation. Number four, as far as I can tell, uh, Mr. Dante Wright wasn't exactly an upstanding citizen. It, 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 it seems to me he either wanted to live or did live or at least glorified that, that kind of gangbanger lifestyle. And that's, that's, that's not okay. I have no idea what his background is, no idea if his dad was in his life, no idea about any of that, okay? But from what I can gather, it doesn't exactly seem like he was an upstanding citizen. And again, from what I can gather, this is all circumspection, so take it with a grain of salt, it doesn't strike me that he was carrying that pistol for the same reason that I carry a pistol. Uh, which is to defend the people I'm with, right? Now maybe he was, and again, we've already established, you shouldn't need a permit to carry your firearm. Uh, however, just from, from the thing I, things I can gather, I don't think he was exactly uh, this wonderful, saintly in, individual. He was at least glorifying wanting to live a gangbanger lifestyle, at the minimum. Again, don't want to slander anybody, but let's just take the facts for what we can see here. Number five, tasers are stupid. Uh, we shouldn't, police shouldn't have tasers. Out of the, I don't know, couple dozen videos I've seen of tasers, um, they either fail, and they have a high failure rate. Tasers have an incredibly high failure rate, in which case someone needs to get shot anyway. Uh, tasers, half the time, if you have like a thick jacket or some kind of thick sweatshirt or something like that, they might not puncture and get through to your skin, which is where they need to get through to, in order to connect. And you have to have, remember, you have to have two prongs that connect 
in order to effectively necessitate compliance, okay? I, in general, think that Taser, the company, that's the name of the company, has done a wonderful job marketing their mostly useless tool uh, to police departments across the country. And now they're kind of standard issue. But that's the problem. They, they shouldn't be standard issue. They've been used in multiple cases that I've seen where police have, you know, more or less tortured individuals um, with tasers, which is not acceptable. Um, I've also seen at least cop one case that I can think of offhand where someone died because they were tasering him to death. Again, they were that was in a torture situation, um, but they just kept tasering this individual and he had a heart condition and he died. So there, there are problems with the taser and the application of the taser. Uh, in general, they kind of seem to be a tool for laziness. Now, again, I'm not a police officer. I'm sure a lot of people would get all hot and bothered about how they need tools and whatever. But in general, tasers are stupid. Tasers should go away. I do not think that tasers actually do anything to reduce shootings, right? Because the idea is if you have a taser, well, you can tase someone instead of shoot them. I, I don't think that that's actually a thing. Uh, in fact, I'd be very curious to see the data because my understanding is, is that when tasers were introduced, shootings didn't go down, uh, tasering just went up, right? So there, there's, I'd really be curious to see the data on someone proving to me that tasers reduce shootings because I don't think that's a thing. In fact, I think if we took tasers away tomorrow, more people wouldn't be shot than already being shot by police. Uh, again, I think they're a bad middle ground that get all kinds of people into trouble both from the police perspective of where you're gonna taser someone and now they present a lethal threat and you got a problem, or from the civilian threat where they're just using a taser inappropriately. So in general, I'm not a fan of tasers. I think we should get rid of them. Number six, uh, if you watch the video, this lady didn't realize she had her gun in her hands. So if you watch the video, this lady gets her gun out and she says, I'm gonna tase you. She still has her gun in her hand. And she's still pointing at the suspect, still threatening to tase him. And then she says, taser, taser, taser and then she shoots him, right, with her, with her gun. The whole time, she didn't realize she actually had her gun in her hand. This is a twofold problem. One, if you look at modern tasers, someone had the brilliant idea of having a taser be able to grip it like a pistol, and I get it. The idea was, is that all my pistol mechanics then can carry over to my taser mechanics, right? So I can just point the taser just like a pistol, and, I, and then I can run it just like a pistol. The problem is, people that aren't that well trained on tasers or don't spend a lot of time knowing the difference and practicing them and staging them, uh, you can confuse them. This is not the first time someone, a police officer has confused their taser with their pistol and shot someone with a pistol instead of a taser. That, that, that's happened before. And it's gonna happen again because of the way the current tasers are shaped. Uh, so we need to go back to the thing of shaping it like a cell phone or a TV controller or something like that, uh, that's nothing like a pistol, okay? That's one, that's, that's a problem. We need to get rid of that. Again, we should get rid of tasers entirely, but whatever. The second point on that is, this lady obviously didn't stage her taser very well. Um, she was obviously used to grabbing her taser with her right hand, which is, which is also her, the hand that she grabs her gun with. And because they feel the same and she was stressed out or whatever, it's easy to see how you can confuse that. She did not set herself up for success here because I've seen a lot of police officers, for example, they will stage their taser on their left side and they'll cross draw it. So there's no way they can confuse it, right? Because the gun comes from over here, taser comes from over here. That's a good idea. Or people will stage it so they only draw their taser with their left hand. That's also a good idea. Um, but she obviously, so there obviously needs to be some more training provided again, we don't just get rid of tasers entirely. I think pepper spray is a wonderful alternative to tasers. I don't think you need both. Huck the taser. The only reason we have them is because some people are really good at sales. Uh, number seven, I just don't think this has a lot to do with racism. I know that a lot of people get hot and bothered about that, but the, the officer who was originally affecting the arrest was black. So I don't, I don't know. I'm not gonna say too much about that. I don't think it has anything to do with racism. Number eight, looting is stupid. Uh, and of course, that's the result of this, right? And this is just a warm up for after the Siobhan trial gets done one way or another. Uh, but looting is stupid. All looting is, it's a bunch of people taking advantage of a bad tumultuous situation and going and stealing stuff. That's all looting is. It's not actually protesting. It doesn't actually do anything. Looting is stupid. Number nine, and somewhat of a side note to number eight, uh, 
you should be allowed to use lethal force to defend your property. The, the fact that that's not a common thing is really a problem. Uh, if someone is pillaging, if you're a small business owner and someone is uh, pillaging your store, which is your very livelihood, you should be allowed to use lethal force to defend that. It's ridiculous that you can't. So you can file that one under another stupid law that needs to be changed. Number 10, this lady should never be a police officer again. Uh, I've heard, don't know, can't confirm uh, that she was there as the field training officer for some new people. Um, and, and this lady should never be a police officer again. If you didn't stage it right or you can't tell the difference or whatever the problem was, it doesn't matter. Someone died because of your mistake. Uh, again, if I, just a regular everyday civilian, were to accidentally shoot somebody, I'd probably be charged with murder and I'd be in jail. Uh, so I don't really care about the excuses of, oh, you know, she was stressed out or confused or they look the same or whatever. At the end of the day, you're responsible for pulling the trigger of your gun. No one else is, you are. We teach that in every gun safety class ever, every class I've taken, every class I've taught, that's what we talk about. You are in charge of every bullet that leaves your gun, you're responsible for, period, end of discussion. So she accidentally shot someone and that's a problem. Uh, by the way, I heard the police uh, department refer to it as an accidental discharge. That's not true. An accidental discharge is when your gun malfunctions and then fires. Uh, that was a negligent discharge. A negligent discharge is when you pull the trigger on the gun wrongly. That's a negligent discharge. Continuing on with that, she should never be a police officer again, and she should probably be charged with manslaughter. Uh, I looked it up just because I was kind of curious, and manslaughter too, uh, seems to be the appropriate charge. It's like 10 years in jail or prison. And uh, the charge for manslaughter too is like if you did something accidentally and someone died. And the example I read was like you're going hunting and someone accidentally gets shot and dies. And I thought, well, that's pretty similar here. So that would seem to me to be the appropriate charge. I doubt that will ever happen, but that would be justice to me in this situation. Number 11, uh, when you're affecting an arrest, Get the cuffs on the guy. There are three police officers, at least there, that I could see what's happening. If you watch the video again, they pull the kid out of the car to arrest him. Then they get right next to the open door of the car and they start to cuff him up. Uh, the lady comes in to grab him. He slips out back into the car and that's when things go bad. If the police officer who was initially affecting the arrest, if he would have pulled the kid out, took him 18 inches to the side, closed the car door, and then got those cuffs on quickly, this might not have been a problem at all. This would have been an easy way to avoid it. Now, again, I'm not a police officer. I don't know what their standard procedures are. I don't know what their practice is. I don't know any of that. So maybe that's part of their standard practice, whatever. But two steps and a closed door could have fixed this problem from ever occurring. Uh, number 12, he shouldn't have tried to get back in the car. He, he, sh he shouldn't have fleed. Yes, he escalated the situation by trying to flee. Uh, that was a bad life choice, okay? He should not have tried to get back into the car. Number 13, and finally, uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm ruling this one personally as a bad shoot. I just don't think it was a good shoot. You can watch the video. You can tell that the lady knows she made a mistake immediately. She knows that she made a mistake. She thought she was going to tase him. Instead, she shot him. She knew that she shouldn't have had her gun out because she was thought she had her taser out. She was trying to use her taser. Instead, she used her pistol and someone died as a result of her mistake. I, I think it was an honest mistake, especially if you watch the video again, she really believes she has her taser. However, it was still a mistake and someone still died wrongly. And, and that of course is the problem. So going forward, I, I, again, I know that this is gonna get blown up into a, a, a huge thing about racism and all that, but I think this is partially a training issue, partially a practice issue, partly an individual competence issue on, on the level of this police officer lady who made this mistake. I think it was an honest mistake. It's led to someone's death. And now how are we going to reform and make choices out of that to hopefully prevent less of these going forward? I hope that was helpful. <clears throat> I guess my purpose in making this whole thing was that to try to cut through a lot of the milieu and vehemence and rage and hurt uh, in, in this thing, which I can understand they're being around. Like I said, I think this was a bad shoot at the end of the day. And so I think it's important to try to understand all the multifaceted issues going on with this one in particular in order to hopefully arrive at some helpful conclusions of how we're going to move forward out of this. Do brave deeds and endure.